Star Wars Squadrons not only has incredibly rich and deep mechanical customization, but also lots of cosmetic options you can unlock all through gameplay. Squadrons has no microtransactions. Everything you see in the game, you get by playing. I'm sure lots of you have seen the Ewok bobblehead from the trailer. This is just one of several cosmetic items you can add to your Starfighter. It's one of many. Squadrons is all about customization, and it's how the developers are saying you'll be playing a unique Starfighter experience like never before. This is something completely new. And the game has a Celestin, so you can channel your inner Nine Nub. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be looking through all the cosmetic items you can unlock in Star Wars Squadrons so far. I recently got to play an early version of the game, but the final version is supposed to have more cosmetic options than what we see here. But here we go, let's do this. Starting off, I'm going to look at all the customization options for your character, and then later we'll look at the Starfighter options. First, up are the New Republic pilot heads. You won't be able to customize your actual facial appearance in Star Wars Squadrons, you'll just be selecting from a list of preset faces. There are five male appearances and also five female, and these are who you'll play as in both the story and multiplayer. Additionally, we also have a Twi'lek, Abbot Neto, Duros with an eye patch, and also a Celestin. I'm pretty sure these alien species are only available in multiplayer, and because Squadrons is obviously a first person game, you won't see your character as you're flying, but you'll be able to view them and interact with other players in the menus before each starfighter battle. Next, we have a few helmet options. All pilots wear helmets while in their starfighters. This is adhering to Star Wars canon, which this game is quite big on. So this no helmet option only affects your appearance in the menus and pre-round. The gunship specialist is specifically a U-wing support pilot helmet. Next is the laser brain helmet, which is obviously a reference to Princess Leia's line in Empire. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. And then the true friend helmet is supposed to resemble an astromech droid. And then you also have an option for body type, either male or female. Next up, we have all the flight suits. You've got your classic Luke Skywalker orange Rebel Alliance flight suit. There's this green heavy duty flight suit with some extra padding. This one also has a fancy scarf. The industrial flight suit is tailored towards mechanically inclined pilots. The tactical flight suit is my personal favorite. I really like the red. The thermal flight suit is for deep space or sub-zero missions, built for long-term survival. And then you've also got a few different colors of the Rebel Alliance flight suit. So there's a bit to choose from. Now you can also additionally customize your pilot's appearance when they're still on the ground and in the menus. The flight tech uniform is the standard appearance. We've got Grandpa Celestin over here. <laughs> We've got the Scoundrel's Jacket, which looks kind of similar to Poe's jacket he gives to Finn, and then also the Marauder's Vest and Elegant Attire to add some extra style. Onto pants, we've got the Flight Tech Uniform, Scoundrel Pants, Marauder's Pants, and Elegant Pants with this cool blaster pistol and holster. I like these ones. You might have noticed your pilot's wearing gloves, and you can also customize these, choose from a wide selection of gloves from the store. And Squadrons also has emotes. I won't go through all of these, but here are some of the better ones. Some of these also carry over from Battlefront 2. And as well as emotes, there's also victory poses, which will be used to show the winners in the post-match screen. And then one of the best customization options in Squadrons are the different voice lines you can give your character. These will be used as you fly during both the story and multiplayer. And each voice style gives your pilot a different personality. You can give your pilot either a male or a female voice, and there's different personalities for both the New Republic and Empire. I'll outfly any Imperial pilot. Just well, this ought to be. F we can do this. I'm game if you. Someone's got to do it. And I'm really hoping they add some alien dialects to the game, hoping we get a voice for the Celestin, the Juros, because seeing a Celestin speaking English is quite unusual. This ought to be fun. Okay, onto the Imperials. The Empire has five male and five female heads to select from, all of which are different from the New Republics. And they also don't have the option for aliens. You can only choose humans in the Empire. They're speciest, I guess. No aliens in the Empire. The Empire has quite a wide range of pilot helmets. We have the Imperial Assault Helmets. This one is called Cold Mask. This is Foundling's Fortune. You've got the standard Imperial TIE pilot helmet, which has different variations like the Elite Security model with red stripes. One of my favorites is the technical helmet. There's this one called the Hunter's Guild, Special Operations, Obsidian Reaper, 
Fangs Out, Skip Tracer Helmet, the Reinforced Helmet, Allegiance Helmet, ISB Loyalty Officer's Helmet, the Chromium Enhanced Helmet, which you should combine with the Chrome Ship, I'm going to show you in a bit, the Silver Slayer, the Bronze Baron, and the Hazard Helmet. Lots of different helmets. We've also got five flight suits, which you can pair up with the helmets. Imperial Navy TIE Pilot Flight Suit, which apparently fewer than 10% of Imperial candidates get to wear. That's the amount of people that become pilots in the Empire. The Hazard Flight Flight suit, the Allegiance flight suit, the reinforced flight suit, technical flight suit, there'll probably be more. The Empire's more casual uniforms include the Flight Tech uniform, the Skip Tracer armor, the Chromium Enhanced armor, which is created from melted down starships apparently, and the ISB Loyalty Officer's armor. And each of these tops also have matching pants and gloves for that full customization experience. The Empire also has their own emotes, more fitting to the Empire's themes, trying to be more menacing and daunting than the New Republic, and also their own victory poses. I personally like Faceless. Just face in the wrong way, that's the way to go. And again, the best part of customization in my eyes and my ears are the different voices. All of these are your typical classic Imperials, but my favorite is definitely the tactician. Our victory is inevitable, of course. This is reminding me a lot of Grand Moff Tarkin. Good to be able to embody Tarkin in this Starfighter pilot. Okay, so onto all the cosmetic customization options for each Starfighter. And each fighter in the New Republic and Empire have mostly the same customization options, but there are a few differences and variations. Vanguard Squadron is the squadron you'll play alongside in the Star Wars Squadron story. And then we've got Green Squadron, who make an appearance in in Return of the Jedi and Rogue One. Red Squadron are the most recognizable X-Wing squadron, responsible for obviously destroying the first Death Star. This is the squadron Luke flew in, obviously. Red 5 and going in. Cavan Angels is Saw Gerrera's squadron, flown by the Partisans. Pink Squadron is in case you want a Starfighter with pink stripes. Chromium Flash, if you want to deck your Starfighter out with a chrome paint job. Combine, just create a full chrome experience here. Can't believe this is a thing, to be honest. The Rust Bucket Paint paint job is giving me GTA 5 customization vibes. Anvil Squadron has a gold paint job, not to be confused with Gold Squadron, also an option, that's the next one. Kalima Squadron were formed by Bail Organa on Crate to sabotage Imperial outposts across the galaxy. Squall Squadron give you this yellow paint job. Caravan's Courage is a purple and yellow paint job. This squadron has a flawless record in medical and escort operations, apparently. Next up is Blue Squadron, another of the most prominent squadrons appearing in the Battle of Scarif, Hoth, Bakura, and Endor. General Merrick was the commander of Blue Squadron before he was killed, of course. And Luminous Being, another unique paint job that really stands out. And then we also have Phoenix Squadron, as seen in Star Wars Rebels. Okay, onto some of the decals. You can customize your Starfighter with different decals for both the New Republic and Empire. You've got the Phoenix, Vanguard Squadron, Alphabet Squadron, the Ewok, Saul Guerrero's Partisans, Galaxy's Hope, and Sabine Wren's Starbird. And each of these comes with several color choices to match whatever starfighter you're flying. Okay, onto some of the stuff I know you guys have been waiting for, the cockpit cosmetics. To be honest, these make more of a difference to your Starfighter than the paint jobs because unlike your Starfighter's paint job, you'll actually be able to see these during gameplay because it's first person, you're in the cockpit, you know what I mean. First up, the holograms, we have a Dedrick piece, otherwise known as Hollow Chess. This is the Mantellian Savrip piece and if there's any Hollow Chess players watching, you'd know that this is the least powerful unit in the game, according to this game anyway. There's a galaxy map, which I think is pretty straightforward what this is. The Monkey Lizard, otherwise known as Salacious B. Crumb, Jabba the Hutt's little sidekick pet, you can have him on your dashboard. And the Pilot Portrait is an artwork created by Sabine Wren, honoring a missing New Republic pilot. Onto the Bobbleheads. There's a miniature X-Wing, a torn torn plush, a figure of Luke Skywalker. Luke obviously became a hero after destroying the Death Star, so people want to put him on your dashboard. This is Tugtar, nicknamed the Thai Killer. This Ewok defended his home in the Battle of Endor and single-handedly sabotaged an Imperial landing platform. And then we have a Pod Racer toy. Go play Star Wars Racer, it's a great game, you need to go play that. And then you can also attach a hanging flare to your cockpit. The Crate Crystal is an action crystal from Crate. There's a carved Millennium Falcon, a destroyed Death Star ornament representing the destruction of the second Death Star. And you can also hang up some fresh flowers, just, you know, feels like home. Okay, on to Imperial customization. You've got the standard Space Superiority series of Starfighters, manufactured
manufactured by Sinar Fleet Systems. Radiance, this one also affects the cockpit interior. Ashen Enforcer, which run Thai patrols along the smugglers run, intercepting illicit cargo. Volcanic, these starfighters were forged in the fires of Mustafar near the Korvax Fortress. This is actually a reference to Vader Immortal, another VR Star Wars game. Korvax Fortress is the location you play through in Vader Immortal. Pretty sure anyway, has something to do with that. Then there's Ghastly Remnant, Ashen Unifier, Ashen Cardinal, a reference to the 881st fighter wing from Star Wars Legends, and the Emperor's Guard, pilots specifically chosen by Palpatine for classified missions. The Empire's decals aren't actually all Empire themed, which is interesting. They include Lord Vader, the Hut Cartel, Imperial Stormtrooper, Sky Strike Academy, and Crimson Dawn, among a few others with different color variations. Okay, let's take a look at the Empire's holograms. We've got a kill tally, which is supposed to count the number of kills your pilot has received, but doesn't actually count this, it's just a standard stock hologram. There's the Special Forces pilot hologram, depicting Commander Gideon Hask from Battlefront 2's campaign. That's interesting, they put him in the game. Little reference there to their previous work. If you remember, Motive Studios built the Battlefront 2 story mode. There's a blueprint of a TIE fighter and also Lord Vader. In case your pilot really has a thing for Vader, a real strong allegiance towards Vader, the Empire manufactures this hologram <laughs> so they can put him up on the dashboard. I bet this is the one Gideon Hask has in his cockpit, surely, you'd have to think. And now the Empire doesn't actually have bubble heads, but instead, other ornaments you can place on the dashboard. There's a Minoc frozen in carbonite, a half-destroyed protocol droid's head, the Medal of the Emperor's Fist. This is a rare honor awarded to pilots for restoring Imperial peace. This was actually originally seen in Star Wars Galaxies. A Karelian Hound Skull, a Lord Vader statuette with red glowing eyes. In case you want two Vader figures in your cockpit, you can do that. And also a TIE pilot statue. And for hanging flares, there's the Lucky Paw, which is supposed to promise health and riches, the Imperial ID badge storing pilot data, the Krayt Dragon Tooth spelt K-R-A-Y-T, and a Stormtrooper helmet. And that's everything in the game for customization so far. Like I said, the developers have confirmed there will be more cosmetic options in the game at launch. What you see here is just a taste or a selection made from the full game. So with that in mind, what customization options do you want to see in Squadrons? Is there a particular bobblehead you're after or a paint job? Something else? Let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to learn all about the other side of customization, all the mechanical upgrades, weapons, and everything else you can add to your Starfighter, go watch this video here. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord for lots more Star Wars gaming, news, and come join the discussion on my Discord about Star Wars Squadrons. Good to see lots of people talking about it in there. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.